Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, Happy New Year to everyone out there in the RV world. This is Rob Scribner, your host, and you're listening to RV Talk Radio. And uh, today I'm going to talk about something that will probably get you rattled. But at the same time, don't forget, Sherry and I love RVing. But uh, there's some observations that uh, we have noticed in the last year since we went back to living in a house and I want to kind of cover some of the misconceptions and some of the things that I know when we went in we kind of got an impression of how things were going to be and I just want to talk about the realities especially before you make that big leap into the full-time RVing lifestyle and Granted, there's some great things about it, but uh, I just want to talk about some real observations that Sherry and I have had since we've gotten off the full-time RVing. Doesn't mean that we won't do it again someday, uh, but there's some things you really want to think about before you do it. Now, I know there's a whole bunch of videos out there like the freedom and get out there and do things and and travel and and less overhead and all that kind of stuff and every day you're seeing it over and over and it's the same old people and they, and my first observation is the ones that are really telling you to come out here and be full timing get get the freedom sell your house and all that stuff and by the way don't forget to buy my book or Join our special club so when you join, we'll show you special videos that will help you become a full-time RVer. Or while you're at it, we've been using this one device and please make sure and use the link below and, and buy a uh, something from Amazon so we can make some money. So they're all out there trying to justify this wonderful life of full-time RVing and uh, in all levels from you know, your caravan to van people all the way up to motorhome people. And if you haven't noticed, the ones that are just really gung-ho out there, they can't seem to do a show without selling you something. (laughs) Or join this membership. Or send us a donation. And don't forget to be a patron. (laughs) Do you see a pattern at all, people? Come on. So uh, let's talk about full-time RVing. Here's what they're not telling you. So yeah, I'm probably going to be a little bit of a Debbie Downer, but at the same time, I uh, once again get concerned about all this hype about coming on out here. And and some of the first things you really need to know is a lot of people are doing it. And uh, first thing you say, well, that's a good sign. Well, I don't know. Uh, you got to remember, it's kind of generational. A lot of millennials and stuff are doing this, but you have to understand the millennials have a little bit different uh, uh, <laughs> look at life than we did when we were younger. They kind of want to beat the system, and and not all of them, just you know, a, a larger population than say uh, when we were that age. So first of all, there's a lot of people buying RVs. So that's the first thing you need to know because when there's a whole bunch of RVs out there, the problem is there isn't enough RV dealers out there to support uh, the low quality that's coming out lately uh, to keep your rig running. So the, it's a night, it can be a nightmare. I'm telling you a big nightmare. If you're full timing and you break down, especially if you're not in your hometown and stuff, and some of you will have extended warranties and stuff like that. And a lot of you won't. And that's that's a nightmare in itself. And I've dealt with that a lot. But uh, the other thing is you're going to wait. And some places are okay. And some are just darn right lousy. 
and uh, sometimes you can stay in the same property because you got to think about it. if you're full timing and they're working on your RV, uh, where are you going to live? And so some people will get a motel room or, or stay with a friend or something like that, but uh, sleep in their car. I don't know, but that's big. You need to really know that, that if you're not a person that can fix your own rig and, and there's some things you just can't do on the road and they certainly do not like you working on your RV in the RV parks. So uh, you need to know that right up front that that is a big, big issue. The other problem is, is because so many people are RVing and stuff, and a lot of them are weekend warriors, but not necessarily, uh, the RV parks are getting harder and harder to get into, especially the popular ones. And so if you're not someone who plans ahead and uh, you're, uh, you're spontaneous, uh, you're going to be frustrated. I can guarantee you that. But let's get down to the day-to-day -day lifestyle of being a full-time RVer as opposed to living in your own home. And some of these things I'm bringing up are kind of things, well, you kind of forget about and uh, you take for granted. And then when you go full-timing, you just kind of deal with it. But let's talk about the times that you get. The weather's good and you're full-timing and you decide to go outside and sit down have a drink read a book have, pet the dog and remember you got to keep that dog on a leash keep that dog on a leash i'm telling you and make sure you don't lose your poopy bags you got to have poopy bags so uh now as compared to then when i go outside and sit down and relax my dog comes out with me without a leash in her own backyard and I can actually sit outside <clears throat> and I like to be sociable too but there's sometimes it's just like you know people looking as they're walking by and they're waving or talking or what you doing and um, I can go outside now with my dog without a leash and we have our own pool, so that's kind of nice too. And Cinder gets to play in the pool. But uh, no one's bugging me. Uh, I, it's not completely peaceful. I mean, i got a road behind our house, so I can hear cars once in a while. Uh, I have bird feeders where I want bird feeders. I have hummingbird feeders where I want to have hummingbird feeders. And Cinder can poop anywhere she wants in her backyard. Yes, we still pick it up and use poopy bags, but when I want to, <laughs> and I—I uh, I mean, I've had times I was sitting outside in an RV park, and literally the neighbor comes over who's like in his seventies or eighties, drunk off his what's his face, walked out and forgot to wear his pants. And then wanted to have a conversation with me while he's sitting in his tidy whities And uh, that was that was fun. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, uh, I just yeah I, I I didn't really realize that even though I went out to relax and stuff, and I do like to be social and and that's enjoyable most of the time. But sometimes you just want to be left alone. Especially if I go outside and I'm doing a narration or something on a video and somebody interrupts me, <laughs> well, it kind of takes me off, but they don't know that they you know, what's going on. But privacy and in the fact that, uh, you know, I had a, a neighbor once that, you know, I played, well, I can't say I didn't like the Eagles, but he was playing it loud enough that I had to listen to it in my rig too. And it was during the day and I couldn't really complain because you get to, you know, be pretty active until like 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock at night. And then they tell you to cool it. But, uh, I mean, that was just one RV park. But, you know, it was, uh, in fact, last summer when we went up to Washington, four RVs down, a person committed suicide with a gun. It was up in Washington. We were at Anacortes staying in the... Uh, Anyway, so yeah, and, uh, 
before you know it, it was cops down there and stuff. It was two, two older guys living together in an RV or traveling together, and one of them blew his head off. It's like, what the, what the heck? And uh, by the way, bullets don't stop very well in an RV, so that's a little worrisome. But um, yeah, I mean, that's that's the big thing right there was like what I took for granted is, I mean, you get used to as a full timer. And if you're boondocking, I mean, you can get a little bit more privacy, but you still don't necessarily get it. And uh, the bottom line is, uh, I've forgotten how nice it is to have my own backyard again. And uh, are you going to miss yours if you go full-timing? And probably the next thing I really have noticed the most is cooking. And I've actually taken up more cooking than I uh, ever have before. And uh, I finally, I mean, I had a nice little barbecue that I used when we were traveling, but now I have a, a Traeger, and you guys probably see us do our videos on the Traeger once in a while. And uh, I've, you know, since we brought all of our stuff out of storage and it's now at the house, uh, suddenly I got cooking bowls and mixers and uh, devices and bread makers and things that I, I forgot I owned. And I certainly couldn't have, and we couldn't put them in the RV at the time. And it's so nice to, uh, have room to cook and do things and try things and and have folks over and have room for dishes and plates and stuff like that and uh yeah it gets kind of frustrating always being so tight and so many uh, limited to so many dishes and things like that and it doesn't have to be that way so we're talking you know, let me just switch over to cost. And you say, well, it's cheaper to have living in an RV and keep my overhead down. And the question I have for you is, is it really? You know, uh, for example, I could easily say that as an RVer, our rent was, yes, definitely a little bit cheaper. But it's still average between, oh, for a good park. Uh, and monthly rates, uh, we pay as high as eight to nine hundred uh, in that range. Also, usually you had to pay for electricity. Yes, there's cheaper places too, but they're cheaper. <laughs> Everything's cheaper, and so uh, and that brings me, you know. So Sherry and I chose that the fact that when we we're in RV, we noticed that we always were looking for excuse to go somewhere like road trips and stuff because we wanted to get out of the RV. And uh, so we were doing a lot of trips and things like that, which are fun. And there was nothing wrong with that at all, but we we're trying to escape the RV. Well, now that we have a house and we have our RV, we actually look forward to going to the RV as long as we know we're not doing it full time. And, and actually, we get quite excited to use our RV when we can. And in a month or so, we're actually going to go up and uh, the Central Oregon where we have it stored and go use it, check it, make sure we winterized it right, no problems and all that stuff, chase out any critters. <laughs> and, uh, but price-wise, our cost might be 100 or two higher. And we chose it that way because of what we chose for a particular house. And it doesn't have to be as that way if you owned a house. Um, depends where you decide to live. So that's been glorious. One is, uh, uh, cost-wise, it wasn't a shocker at all. And uh, cooking, that really stands out. And uh, maybe some of you guys, well, I eat out a lot. Well, yeah, that's because you're in the RV a lot. But uh, those two things, the space and the um, privacy of my own backyard. And uh, I, I'm fortunate. I have very nice, I have great neighbors. And I picked a place that's quiet. And uh, uh, I think the next thing I really want to cover is, let's talk about medical for a minute. Just the other day, uh I don't talk about our health issues and stuff, but I actually had an episode with uh, diverticulitis and I might have had food poisoning or something, but my body went out of control. In fact, I actually passed out in the bathroom and I don't need to go into the whole story, but it was serious enough where my wife had to call 911. 
And they were here in, I swear, five minutes. Five minutes. They were here. And I'm in Phoenix. I'm in the outside of Phoenix. I'm in a town called Mesa. And uh, uh, when you're in my age, and it does, and you could be younger, and there's a lot of younger people than me that have a lot more medical issues than I have. I don't really have any, I don't have prescriptions or nothing, but I do have diverticulitis, and it kind of acts up once in a while. <laughs> but I'm very fortunate. But where you might be, and not to mention our health care, especially if you have Obamacare, you may have some serious issues about if you have an emergency. And, uh, I mean, we all travel and we all have to deal with that. But if you're going full time and going to different areas, especially outside of your state and stuff, you have a lot of things to consider. And then if you were to have something serious like a heart attack and stuff, time is, uh, is of the essence. So I ask you, is full timing really uh, going to be safe for you in the future? Is that, and I'm going to cover some other things too and stuff. But I want you to really think about before you make this drastic decision of coming on out here. You just got to remember these guys that are pitching this stuff are trying to justify their lifestyles basically. And not to mention, they're trying to sell you stuff, and it's getting old. It's getting real old. It's getting you know, this e-begging stuff where it's like, come on, buy my book. Come on, buy something from Arizona, uh, Amazon. Come on, please be a patron. Don't you see it? Look, listen. Every show that you're watching, those ones you really like, or join our club, and we'll, we have special videos just for you. It's... Every one of them is so clear. It's like they're living this lifestyle. They're living, um, as my father would say, they don't have a pot to piss in. And sorry, but <laughs> old saying my, and they're just trying to do this lifestyle and survive and and scraping to get money all the time. And and they're trying to get it from you. And and, and yes, I mean even our show we have uh, and we do appreciate. We do get people that donate to us and, and stuff like that but it's only to help pay for equipment and stuff like that and an appreciation we call it a tip jar but uh these other people they have to have it have to have it or they may have to stop it for three weeks and pick beets sugar beets it's look at what you're Look at the whole picture, and you got to realize they're showing you five minutes of their life out of a 24 hour day. And uh, it's uh, almost a scam. And then you get on out here, and yes, this is a fun lifestyle, but you will be giving up a lot of things. And here's some other things that I've observed since we've gotten off the road and uh, really stand out showers. And laundry. Uh, so, of course, all you guys know, like, uh, I mean, we used our shower on a regular basis in our RV, but it really gets old after a while, only having one inch on both sides, trying to you know, wash your hair. And, and then, of course, you're worrying about how much you're filling up your tanks, how much water you're using. Of course, you only have 10, 12 gallons of hot water if you're lucky. Um... And it was all right. It worked, and we did it. And uh, but now <laughs> I take long as showers I want, and I uh, have lots of room. And uh, it's uh, in fact I can even fit that. Sh I can even give Cinder a great shower, <laughs> give her a bath in that shower, and plenty of room to scrub her up and get her all cleaned up and and rinse down. And it's just. Uh, and you know, it's only you using it. And so if you're using like the public bath showers and stuff, those get kind of grody. And it just seems like I don't care how hard they try to keep those clean. You know, some people just cannot take care of stuff. 
And and in laundry, of course, there's a handful of you guys that have your own washer dryer in the uh, RV. We had one too, and Sherry kind of hated it because uh, she had an all-in-one kind of thing in our motorhome that we had. And uh, she hated it because uh, the clothes were always so wrinkly. And, uh, of course, you know, um, uh, they use, you know, the water and things like that. So that's always an issue. And I, I guess I get real tired. What I don't miss is worrying about my tanks all the time. How much, how full is my gray tank? How full is my black tank? How much water do I have left? And, and um, you know, it's a little different if you're on full-time hookups. But uh, you still are constantly dealing with that issue. And you're at a house you don't worry about that at all. Uh, in garbage, I mean, garbage service. I have garbage service right here. I pay for it. Yeah, it's part of my utilities, part of my septic, the whole little package. <clears throat> and, uh, uh, but it's it's there, convenient. I don't have to worry about what I'm throwing away. I, I, I uh, don't have to uh, hike a half a mile to get rid of our garbage and things like that. And, I just don't miss that stuff and and having our own washer and dryer where it's just been our stuff me and sherry and uh because people oh my god they put sandy clothes in washing machines and lord and lord knows what else dog blankets and things like that and it's you know i guess the only cooties i want to deal with is our own cooties <laughs> i i don't miss that and you and you gotta give that up you are and it's and it's okay and it's and it's you'll survive just fine and uh if you think about how much money you go dumping into all those laundry mats and stuff you realize that in a year's time or so you'd be able to buy your own washer and dryer <laughs> so it's uh is it cheaper i don't i it just works out about the same so i'm not saying that one is better than the other other than the, Living in a house is not that more expensive than living in your RV. I really think the best way to do RVing is to have a base of some sort and and maybe doing some full-time RVing for a couple of months and stuff and come back to reality. And a lot of people, that's what a lot of people do. Um, but to just sell everything and go out and and especially if you're older like us and you get out there and, and maybe your health starts to decline and all that stuff and where are you at and can you ever get back into a house again it's tough and this is actually a good time to be you know wealth is coming up and taxes are coming down and and there's jobs to be had it's an opportunity to actually buy a house in the you know, maybe you have to sacrifice the RV for a while, but eventually you can get an RV too and then find a way to do a blend. But to give up everything and put everything in storage. And if you had a house and you put it in storage and you have to pay for that storage unit. So when you start playing the numbers, okay, so we eight, nine hundred dollars a month for rent. Then some you know, a lot of these places you gotta pay for electrical. Then you probably have things in storage. And uh <laughs> When you start playing with the cost and laundry mats and things like that, you realize you can make a mortgage payment and have a house of your own. And one of the biggest things that really have stood out since we got back into a house, and once again, we still have an RV. We enjoy our RV. We go RVing all the time. But now I have time, room, not time, I have time, it's always a battle, but now I can do hobbies, which Sherry and I, we've been doing what's called resin art, working with resin and um, making jewelry and stuff like that. And uh, and we have some other hobbies that we've kind of picked up on and, and we didn't have the room and the space. And now we have a room for my job here, which is radio and, and podcasts and things like that, all devoted to just that a room that's totally electronics and, and microphones and cameras and the whole works i have another room devoted to a studio for what we call the turds we do the uh, and some and we do a lot of uh, 
uh, editorial type things for other shows over there in that other room. And it's also a room that we have space to do some of our art. And then we have a spare bedroom for guests, which is not an issue anymore, and have family over. And we actually have another bedroom that is slowly getting converted to, it's going to be our new art room. And as soon as we can get rid of all this junk that we had, <laughs> and I do suggest you still try to live a minimalist life if you get back into a house. Um, but, and even renting a house has got some benefits, but owning your own house is nice. It's, it's, it, it does it have costs and does it have emergencies and have things to be fixed like an RV? Yep. Not going to get away from that. But, uh, I do know that my house will weather a storm better than my RV. And, uh, I know that if some reason I was the past, so Sherry is a past, we've, Got it set up in a way that we can keep our home and keep our... I mean, if I passed when I was a full-time RVer, it's like, woohoo, I just left my wife an RV to try to maintain. And, uh, I mean, she'd probably get by her, right? But I'd much rather have left her a house and means to be able to keep it. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just get so frustrated when I'm watching these videos and the young ones like oh it's a great lifestyle we've been working on the RV we've repainted the outside of the trailer and, and it's like boy that's glorious um wouldn't you rather just wake up in the morning in your nice comfy house and go see the movies or take care of a couple chores around the house or relax and and let your hair down walk around in your bathroom for a while and and uh, walk outside of your backyard that's private and still be in your bath <laughs> bathroom. <laughs> of course, down here, this is Arizona, so it's warm enough to do that. And uh, I don't know. I just, these are things I've forgotten about when I did or go full-timing. And now that I have a house and I was like, my goodness, I gave up a lot of stuff. I gave up my privacy. I gave up my freedom to do things the way I want to for cleaning and walking and having my dog. And and um, privacy was a big part. Even though you're in your RV and you feel like it's private, you're just not really private. And your neighbors are right next to you. I mean, even tight housing isn't that tight. And um, of course, you got all the rules uh, you know, it's like in Arizona here, I tried to set up a little swimming pool, a little wading pool for cinder in the hot, hot weather. And I got in trouble with the people in the office. They didn't want little pools underneath the fifth wheel part there so cinder could get cooled off from the walks because the concrete was warm. And those kind of things are so frustrating. It's like, is that really freedom? Really? I mean, we all have rules and stipulations we have to live in. Even, you know, as homeowners, uh, we don't have a homeowners here, but there's still city ordin ordinances that we have to abide by. There's rules. We're, uh, we're a country of law. And, uh, you know, we have law, and then there's uh, places with rules. <laughs> and uh, and a, it doesn't sound like, I mean, you say, oh, I got freedom. I can go anywhere I want. So can we if we want to. Um, but we get to come home to a home. And uh, I really, really, I mean, thoroughly thought it over. Play all the scenarios in your head. Take each day that you're going through today and say, how would this be different if I lived in an RV full time? I really want you to think that over before you make this big decision to come out here and enjoy the RV freedom, they call it. Oh, and not to mention this RV you buy will depreciate like a rock <laughs> falling <laughs> from the Grand Canyon. I'm telling you, the newer they are, the <laughs> harder they fall. They are not good investments. They are plain old not good investments 
now a house other than what we went through in 2008. And even if you were able to sustain going through 2008, a house typically appreciates and it can be a form of investment for your future. Can you say that about your RV? Now, don't get me wrong. I love RVs. I love road trips. I even like snowbirding or sunbirding, either one you want to do. But this full-time thing, sell it all and go full-timing. Yes, I know there's people out there that are perfectly happy. When I've met some people, yeah, I've been in my RV for 15 years. And, and that's great. And it probably worked out just great for them. And But they also, it's easy to forget what you've given up. Now, some people got burned in 2008, and, and so they got hard feelings. But, you know, Americans are kind of the people that get, you know, pushed to the ground, and you get up again and make it happen. And the youngins, I'm sorry, but it still makes sense to get a, get a skill, get an education, get a career, get a skill of some sort or another before you come out of here and start doing this full timing thing and travel the world. Now there's exceptions to everything, but that basis is still as strong a hundred years ago, 50 years ago to today. Uh, this silver spoon stuff attitude you guys have is going to catch up with you. If it doesn't catch up, you say, well, I, I, we're doing great. <laughs> All right, well, let's get together in 10 years and let's talk about how great you're doing uh, without that education, without those skills, without a basis, without investing in a home, without investing at all. Um, no, you're never going to convince me that's a way to go. You guess you, you got to earn your keep. You got to earn these things that come to you later in life and you'll appreciate them more anyway but you'll be in a much stronger financial situation where you can not only do it but do it as long as you want or as long as your body and health will let you that's enough i'm preaching on that and the other thing i, I really perturbed me back in, uh, when we we're RVing is some places i had a heck of a time if we had both of our cars well, you can't have two cars in your space. Oh, so one car would be like half a mile away over in some place you could park it. Or um, have a visitor. Where the heck do they park? Um, got real tired of that. And, and getting tired of people telling me what I could have in my yard and what I couldn't. Now I can park my boat on the side of the house. Uh, can't put the RV there. I'm just out of room. <laughs> And I can have three cars or four cars. I have the driveway to do it. As long as it's not a piece of junk hanging out there, I'm okay. Plants, my yard, flowers, vegetables. I can do all of it now. If I want to. <laughs> it may require a little work. Can you believe my, my wife's going to make me put planter boxes in and we're going to try to do vegetables. Which is really weird in Arizona because you start like... In January, it's like, anyway, getting back to the subject, the, the bottom line is I can, I can do, I have more freedom now than I did when I was a full-time RVer. Once again, if you still think our full-time RVing's for you, go for it. But if you're kind of hemming and hawing, you're just watching about three or four channels that are your favorite, and they're the same old people, and I'm not pointing them out by name, but l really listen to them and, and, and look at their descriptions, and you will find that all they're really trying to do is to sell you something so they could afford their lifestyle. Don't you get it? Even podcasts out there, they're doing these shows and they're pushing memberships. Why? Because they're tied into them. 
<laughs> Open your eyes and realize what you're watching. These people are nice people. There's no doubt they're great people. But they're just salespeople. And it's probably why I'm not rich and famous or anything, because I'm too truthful. Um, I'm not greedy enough. I don't know what it is. I can't do that to you. And it's not a lifestyle. I want me and Sherry to constantly worry about, can I sell stuff? If I'm not selling something to you on the internet, then I'm trying to go to all these little swap meets to sell my stuff. Or I've got to go work camping and pay and get paid minimal. And some of them will provide places to park and it's not the greatest lifestyle in the world. I don't know. I just think it over. Think this through. Think about this full-time living and stuff. Now, you may be in a position where, hey, you could be, buy your rig and cash and, and all that. And, and you could really set up the scenario to be a really, who cares about depreciation? Who cares about certain things? We can go anywhere in the world and we have the time. Of course, that's the other precious commodity we're talking about here is time. Health, money, insignificant. The, the quantity or the thing that's really of value out there is time. However, everything takes money. And sometimes you need to play that time you've got to investing in yourself, school, skills, savings, 401ks, insurance, savings, buying a home, investing in and letting things grow so you can do some things like full-time RVing and truly enjoy it. Think about it. Take another look at these shows you're watching and really open your eyes and say, what's really going on here? And of course, there's the other subject. Here it comes. Children. So we got these guys out there all thrilled to death that they're running around in their trailers or motorhomes with their kid. Now, some of them that if the kids aren't in school yet, well, isn't too much of an impact, I guess. Of course, there's the, well, we'll just do homeschooling. Or homeschooling is only as good as the parents make it. And then the fact that a child doesn't have their own space, a place where their imagination can grow and a place that they can call their own. It's called their bedroom. And then there's even ones out there that are going to have children and raise baby in their RV. And I have news for you. There's going to be those nights of the screaming and the temperatures. And I can guarantee you, you're not going to have a happy neighbor. And of course, consistency of of warmth and, and uh, all the th tools you need to embrace having a little one like that. I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I mean, it can work and it does work, but stability, privacy, having a place to call their own, Having all the equipment and tools you need for children. A variety of toys and educational things. Is an RV the place for that? <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know. I, uh, I can't say I'm an expert in any of this. I'm just bringing it up for conversation. Is it really, really the foundation that you want your children to have? Or do you want to give them that solid uh, base, uh, a neighborhood, their own place to play? Maybe public schools where they can actually get learn how to be social with other kids, deal with the good and bad. 
you can't hide the kids all the time from bad. They need to know how to deal with it. Because if they don't and become adults, it's worse. So anyway, that's all I'll say in that particular subject. But once again, I ask you, are these the things you want to give up? Are you willing to give up? Is it worth giving up? Is this freedom you're talking about and this lower overhead that you think you're going to get, does it really exist? Is it really what you want or are you just getting persuaded by all these channels out there and say, come on out here. I'm trying to justify my life, so I may as well bring you along with me. That's really what they're saying. I sometimes wonder if the message of come on out here and be an RVer is really saying, all right, here's an easy target to shoot. Forget about the hard target of actually stability, a household, a good investment. Why work so hard? Why would you want to just work so hard when you can take the easy way out? Buy yourself a trailer. <laughs> Come on, people, go to work. <laughs> and this easy lifestyle that you think you're going to go find, it's going to catch up with you. So before, once again, you think about this full-time lifestyle RV is going to be solve all my problems. I won't have to work as hard is really what I'm saying. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to cheat life a little bit. I certainly don't want to be like my mother and father and have to work so hard to build a good foundation for my family and home and school and and work environment and all these things. I mean, that's crazy, working hard. Now, the other thing I always notice is like these folks that are like van dwellers and stuff. And you may not know it, but I just took a little break and I thought I'd go watch a video and see what's going on out there. And it's Oh, I know. So I, I watched this chart cheap RVing guy once in a while. And so they're talking about the glorious life of living 14 days in BLM land and moving to another place. Always looking behind your shoulder. Never settled. Always gone to go. And some people love that lifestyle. And uh, I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> hearing someone dictate to me what a great lifestyle it is to be a van dweller while sitting in a little van and knowing that when he's ready to go use the bathroom he pulls out his little bucket and in fact that's the one thing I just like it just you know as a full-time RVer I really got tired of dealing with crap <laughs> I mean uh in the two times that we did full-timing I had to be exposed to black tank stuff more than I care to be uh, exposed to. And I just, uh, a little tired of that. And then I got these other people I know are, are parked at some place or property or something like that. So they've got to deal with the tanks. And so they pump out their stuff into their pickup, into a tank, and then go find a place to go dump it. And it's like, I'm sorry, but I mean, that's just a fact of life that people do that stuff. But, you know, I don't miss that at all. I really do not miss dealing with gray tanks and black tanks all the time. It's a bunch of crap. And, you know, as I do more observation of watching people like, I'm watching one show now, a venture or a van guy or something like that. And uh, they run around from job to job to job and things like that. And uh, uh, if you really listen, I mean, it's not an easy lifestyle. And of course, no lifestyle is really that easy. But one of the things I, I constantly hear in these videos is they don't think that far ahead. It's like they're trying to teach you quit thinking ahead. Quit planning. Live for the now. Be happy. 
And, and that's, that's fine. And some people actually need that, but you know, it's not a sin to plan. It's not a sin to think ahead. It's certainly not a sin to have a vision. And a lot of them I've heard, and I heard it in this video, well, how long are you going to RV? I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. As long as I can, I guess. Well, that time will come. The time will come. And if you don't plan, you don't think ahead, don't have a vision, understand that maybe if you're getting in your older uh, ages, how many people you know are in their 50s? How many you know are in the 60s? How many do you know in their 70s? Some of them are doing great. Others are not. You can't guarantee what you're going to be, but what if you don't plan for the what ifs, just like the house we bought. We didn't buy a house two-story type of thing. We're thinking ahead. So we bought a Rambler. Very little steps. Easy to move around. Why? Well, it's not a problem now. But what if I'm 65? What if I'm 75? What if one of us is gone and our health isn't that good? And you can't get upstairs and things like that. Oh my God, did I actually think ahead? Did I have a vision? Am I making good decisions now that will be good for me 20 years from now? Can you say that with a full-time RVing? If I'm a full-time RVer now, it's 55, 65. And I do this for a long, long time ago. Where am I going to be at when I'm 75 or 80 and I can't get around that much? And I have an RV I can't sell. I'm underwater on. What if I pass? My wife doesn't drive the RV or vice versa. I don't think it's a very good idea not to think ahead. I don't think it's a very good idea not to have a vision, a plan. Live for the now? You can do that in momentarily ways, you know, during the day, but not the plan for your future. Is that what full-time RVing is? Don't think about your future. Just live for the now. I promise you, you're going to regret that. So once again, Rob has not let you down. <laughs> He's a realist. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's just Somebody needs to talk about this. Somebody needs to talk about some of the real stories out there. You know, you watch a video and say, oh yeah, we're broke down. Well, they don't tell you they were broke down for like four days underneath the RV trying to change their own transmission oil and asking their buddy if they could park in their parking lot and or a stranger's parking lot. Uh, I don't know. It's just... Uh, you're not getting the whole picture. Now, granted, if you want to do it, I'm all for you. But do it on your terms and your terms only. Don't get caught up in these videos and these channels and these gimmicks and scams and e-biggers. Those most popular channels you're watching. Open your eyes. Be aware of what's really going on with those shows. The one, you know, the ones that get their shows out regularly. The ones that uh, always have these perfect subjects, and they always happen to have something for sale, a link for you to click on, some Amazon things, or a book you should buy, or a membership you should be, or a camping uh, membership you should be part of. They're just struggling. And of course, when they're in front of their video, you think they're going to be gloomy? For five, ten minutes while they're doing their videos, they're going to be the happiest people you've ever seen. Then when they turn off the video, they go to work. First of all, just getting the video together. Making sure those Amazon links are on there. 
or getting their training videos on there so you can join their membership and so they can get a subscription out of you so they can make money and money money like that and it's really not that good of money because they're trying to cheat the future and it is going to catch up with them and I might be all right and it might be great for you but I urge you to do your homework I urge you do you really want to give up your house do you really want to give up your foundation or base Maybe you want to modify it. Like I ran into a couple down here the other day. They actually own a couple of little houses. They have a little 800 square foot park model here in Arizona. They have a cabin up in uh, Montana. And they have another little cabin type thing over in the uh, California coast. And then they RV kind of in between them. But they're at the age that they could do that. But they plant. This was stuff they did years ago. So they could do it now. So I guess now they're living in the now, but they were very realistic people. They had a plan. And now that they're in their older years, it works. And if one was to pass, lose a spouse, they have investments. Not only a great way to travel and use an RV, and it's kind of full timing in a way with base places to stop. But the bottom line is no matter what happens in the future, health wise, spouse wise, uh, disaster wise, they have a plan, they have a backup, and they have a foundation. Are you really willing to give up that foundation? Are you willing to stop? working the foundation you're working now because someone tells you you should come out and get this RV freedom, which is getting worse and worse as far as parks being full, services being bad, quality going down. Pump out those RVs and sell them, sell them, sell them because everybody's buying one, which means the factories are going all out and they're cutting corners and we're paying for it. Don't even buy a new RV without planning on sticking around for a year until you get the bugs out of it. It's the truth. I have not owned one RV. I buy new RVs without some critical thing going wrong because it, of a quality issue. And yes, it was a pain in the butt to get that quality issue fixed along with what's just normal wear and tear. And luckily, I can do a lot of stuff myself, but not everybody can. So think about this full-time RVing thing. Think about these shows you're watching. Are they being frank with you like this show? Of course, we focus on RV lifestyle, so we're not talking about how to fix things. How many videos do you have to watch to, to, to figure out how to do winterization? There's thousands of them. <laughs> How many videos are out there out that empty your black tank? There's thousands of them. How many out there want to put solar in there? Who wants to have 1,000 watts of solar? Try selling, reselling your RV with all that crap on there. First of all, you're going to lose money in the RV in the first place. And then some people aren't going to appreciate the fact you got all this gear on there that they don't even understand or don't really even want. Maybe you'll transfer it to the new RV you buy, I guess. But anyway, I love RVing. I love traveling. I also love having a base. I love having a plan, a future, and something for my wife if I'm gone. I, if I had my children, I enjoyed the fact that I gave them a base, their own, neighborhood they were in public schools maybe where you live isn't the best for public schools i understand that do i regret any of that could i've done rving sooner i don't regret any of it i'd even consider full-time rving until the after kit we were empty nesters i planned i had investments i had things that allowed me to do 
<clears throat> all the great things me and Sherry got to do are still doing. We keep modifying it. And we live for the now momentarily. But then reality hits. And it's like, what if? You've got a plan for the what ifs. But if you do full-time RV, I wish you the best of luck and happiness and freedom. But at the same time, make sure you're thinking all this through. That's all I ask. I want to thank everybody so much for listening to RV Talk Radio. And we'll talk about sensitive stuff like this in the future. I wish everybody safety, happiness, and a great 2018. And most of all, we love you because you love us. <laughs> so guys, have a good one. We'll talk to you next time. Stay out of trouble. Think it through. And Happy New Year. Hey, thank you for listening to RV Talk Radio. Please take the time to like and subscribe and share our videos all over the whole wild world. At least to the places you could drive to. <laughs> <laughs>